In this one, we're going to take a look at proportions. So proportion is a mathematical statement that allows us to compare rates and ratios. So you take a pair of ratios or you take a pair of rates and show that they're equal. Um, it's written as a fraction or a ratio comparison. So it can be either written uh, something like this. So this is a proportion. 3 over 4 is equal to 9 over 12. If we multiply 3 by 3, we get 9. If we multiply 4 by 3, we get 12. So that is a comparison of them. Same thing here, you could write it as a ratio. Most often, uh, it's, it's most convenient to work with these when they're written in fraction form. Um, and you'll see in, the, in a moment here when we do some uh, solving of proportions. So if you take a look here, there's two ways of approaching these. I'll show you both. Um, and then you pick the method that you think is most effective for you. If you take a look at the first one, and A, we have 24 over 5 equals M over 15. So we want to find out what M is. We want to solve this proportion. So in this case, we can take a look at the 5 and 15 that are in the same position and figure out what's it take multiplying or dividing to go from 5 to 15. And in this case, if you multiply 5 by 3, you will get 15. And thus, in the case of the top, we do the exact same thing. Because they're equal, we got to do the same thing on both. So we multiply that by 3. That will give us M. So M equals 24 times 3. 24 times 3 is going to give us uh, 12 and 60, 72. 24 times 3 is 72. So M is 72 in this case. So one way to do it is to actually take a look and see, okay, what's it take to go from 5 to 15? 15 divided by 5 is 3. So if we multiply 5 by, 5, uh, by 3, we get 15. So that's one way of solving them. The other way, which um, I think is a little more uh, of an easier one if you have, especially decimal numbers and things like that that show up, because these do end up having decimals in cases. So and the next one, I'll show you the, another method, and that is called cross multiplying. So what we're going to do is I like to draw an arrow from the bottom number to the top number on the opposite side. So we're going to cross multiply. And so that just reminds me that I'm multiplying, I'm multiplying, I'm going to multiply x by 64 and 36 by 16. This is going to get rid of the fractions and leave us with uh, an equation that we can solve, uh, a solvable equation. So this is called cross multiply. Okay, so if you're asked to cross multiply, that's what you're doing. You're taking the bottom of one fraction and multiplying it by the top of the other. But it only happens in a proportion when there is an equal sign. So it has to have an equal sign. Okay. must have an equal sign in the middle. This doesn't work if you're multiplying or dividing fractions. It's not the same thing. So when we multiply that out, we get 16 times 36 equals 64 times x. And we can calculate 16 times 36. And we'll get 576 equals 64 x 64 times x remember when there's no uh, add subtract multiply or divide sign in between then we assume that it is multiplying now thinking of how we solve pythagorean theorem type questions we need to get rid of this time 64 so we have to do the opposite operation and the opposite of multiplying by 64 is to divide both sides by 64 so if we have 576 divided by 64, that equals 64x divided by 64. Because we're div multiplying and then dividing by 64, those portions will actually cancel each other out. We're just left with x on this side. And then 576 divided by 64 
is going to give us 9. So 9 is equal to x, or x value here is 9. Both these methods work depending on, this is good for, the first method is good for um, smaller numbers, ones that you can easily figure out the uh, the proportion uh, you know, in your head, some calculations, but if it's larger numbers or more complex or you're not sure, this cross multiply method will always work. And it is just a matter of multiplying the top number by the opposite bottoms and then multiply one pair you can and divide by the other uh, the number in the other pair and that'll solve for the variables. This process will happen all the time. So I'm going to do the next question um, with the cross multiply method to give them another example of it. So in this case here, uh, if you buy an X station gaming system online for $499 but it was in U.S. money, and that should probably be a comma and a lowercase h there. How much did it cost in Canadian money if the exchange rate is $1 Canadian equals 97 cents American? So we can set ourselves up a proportion here and compare these. So we have a rate of $1 Canadian is equal to 0 0.97 American and since I have Canadian on top and American on the bottom I'll do the same thing with my X gaming system so I'm looking for the cost here I'll call it C in Canadian over the cost in American that I paid 499 now if you put American money on the top it would be the same thing uh, we would get the same solution. So you could do it either way. Put the American money on the top, put the American money on the bottom. Um, as long as the tops are both Canadian and the bottoms are both American, you will get the same result. So here's our one rate. The dollar Canadian is 97 cents American. And then our unknown value of Canadian is equal to the $499 American. And now we can use the cross multiply method to solve this. So I'm going to cross multiply here and I'm going to have 499 times the 1 and on the other side 0 0.97 times the C. 499 times 1 is just 499 and so that equals the 0 0.97 times C and again we're multiplying by 0.97, so to do the opposite of that, we'll divide both sides by 0.97. And I'm going to write it this way, because this is another way you'll see it written, as a fractional division. If you do it this way, or you write it as we did above, like this, both give you the same situation. Uh, this is just a little neater and cleaner in a matter of uh, writing. You can write a little more concise. So we'll cancel out. These ones, we're just left with C over here. And then we do our 499 divided by 0.97. And we get approximately $514.43. So the cost of the uh, X station gaming uh, system in Canadian was $514.43. And again, I like this cross multiply method when we have these decimals in that. I find it's easier to find, uh, you know, what, what do you multiply 90, 0.97 by to get 499? I think it's just a little easier to work with it in uh, the cross multiply method. But again, it's your choice how you want to do it. Try both if you want. See what you prefer. One more thing with this one, uh, the constant of proportionality. So a little complex terminology. Um, this is just, in general, the it's the value that compares uh, the, the proportions. It's generally a unit rate. Um, so let's do a little uh, question here. 
practice a little more with the con uh, with proportions and then uh, this constant proportionality. So Sam works 30 hours each week earning $1,155. Without changing her hourly rate, she starts working 40 hours per week. How much will she now earn per week? Well, originally she was working 30 hours and making $1,155. Now she's working 40 hours and we want to know how much she makes. So we use P for pay. How much does she get paid? So we have now a proportion set up. We can use our cross multiplying to solve this. I probably should have left myself a little more space. Uh, but we're going to cross multiply these. And when we do, we'll get 30p equals 40 times 1155, $1,155. So I'm just going to continue this up here. So I'm going to multiply the 40 by 1155. Uh, one so I got 30p equals 40 times 1155. That's going to give me forty-six two hundred forty-six thousand dollars, uh, forty-six thousand two hundred dollars. And now the last step is just to divide both sides by thirty. So thirty p over thirty equals four six two zero zero divided by thirty. This is going to give me my p. Again, those cancel to get the p, and then. We have 46,200 divided by 30, and that's going to give us 1,540. For she makes $1,540 now. Now the next part says, how many 40 hour weeks will it take to earn $15,000? Well, here's our um, proportion for 40 hours. So for 40 hours, she makes 1,540. Um, so she's making $1,540 in 40 hours per, or sorry, per week. So now we're changing to, uh, to weeks. So how many uh, weeks will it take? So that's per one week, and that's going to equal fifteen thousand dollars, and um, the number of weeks. So again, we change this up a little bit. We change the proportion from uh, hours to weeks, so it's that much money per week. And then again, uh, we cross multiply these. We get one five four zero W equals. 15,000 times 1, which is just 15,000. And now we'll just divide both sides by 1,540. We'll get W on this side as these cancel. Again, we're dividing by that because it's the opposite of multiplying, and when we do the opposite of multiplying, it clears, uh, it gets rid of that multiplication. But whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other, just like in um, the Pythagorean theorem when we were solving some of those. So let's divide this out. 15,000 divided by 1,540, and I get 9.7 approximately. So she's gonna have to work 10 weeks to get the uh, value. And we just round that up because she's going to end up working the full week. So the last part here now gets into that constant proportionality. So what's the constant thing here? What's the constant value that's always not, that's not changing? Well, look at our question. What's the th thing that doesn't change? It's her hourly rate. The amount of money she gets paid per hour is always the same. So our constant of proportionality is going to be how much does she get paid per hour? So we can take uh, any of our values. I'm going to go right back to the start. And she made $1,155 per 
per 30 hours. So we just got to find the unit rate. What's the unit rate here? Well, that translates into 1155 divided by 30. And that will give us $38.50 per hour. And just to shorten this up, I'm going to actually say the COP, the COP is, put some dots in there, the COP is 38.50. So COP for 30, uh, the, um, constant of proportionality. So that's that constant value. So throughout all these questions, that's the one thing that stayed the same. She was always making that $38.50 um, in each situation.